This bulbous glowing rotating marvel you see in front of you is called a Sphero. What's controlling it? Magic and Bluetooth and a smartphone or tablet, but mainly magic. Basically, it's like a remote controlled tennis ball stunt junkie that's waterproof and pet proof. Uh, I guess that depends on the pet, actually. While this little ball-shaped bundle of stealth is primed for sneaking up on an unsuspecting foe, it can't really deliver any type of payload, except, of course, for its adorable roundness. That's where the Sphero Chariot comes into play. So by channeling the power of Charlton Heston, we can use it to lug around our spy-loving necessities. For example, you can add an iOS or Android device and install a free webcam monitoring app such as Epoch Cam for iOS or IP Cam for Android. Then you can watch the camera on your computer while controlling your Sphero with a tablet. While this is a lot of fun to play around with, it does require a lot of different devices. But let's use it as inspiration to see if we can make our own spy cam rover and do it for as cheaply as possible. So here's a list of the things you'll need. A Raspberry Pi with all the fixins, a motor driver, a webcam or Pi cam, a USB wireless adapter, and a remote control car. You can find links to everything you see here on the project page in the video description. And if you already have an old RC car, you can get everything else for less than $50. For you longtime tinker nerds, you may remember that not too long ago, I used Arduino and Bluetooth to control an RC car. You'll want to watch this video for an in-depth look at how to gut an RC car and how to set it up for this project. But for now, let's make some pie. You first want to download the Raspbian OS and burn it to an SD card using WinImage. With wireless webcam, keyboard, mouse, and monitor plugged into your Pi, insert your SD card and then power it on. You should first see the setup screen and from here you want to expand the SD card to use the entire space. And if you're using a Pi Cam, be sure to enable that. And then if you want a performance boost, you can go into the advanced settings and overclock the Pi. Then you can select finish and let it reboot. When it comes back up, log in using Pi and Raspberry as the password and then type start X to launch the desktop. And then use the Wi-Fi config utility to connect to your Wi-Fi and obtain an IP address. After that, you can just log out and disconnect the keyboard, mouse, and monitor because we can do the rest through SSH. If you want to do that using Windows, you want to download PuTTY and use it to connect to your Pi's IP address. Now let's make sure the Pi is fully updated and upgraded before we continue. When that's done, we need to install some type of webcam software. I'm going to be using MJPEG Streamer because it was the easiest to set up. So first, let's download the prerequisite libraries and then make a symbolic link to the video dev 2 file. Then use git to download the mjpeg streamer repository, cd into that directory, and then run this make command. Copy the outputted mjpeg streamer file to the user local bin directory and copy the output http input file and input uvc files to the user local lib directory. The last thing that you want to copy is the ww folder to our home pi ww directory. Next, use nano to edit the bash rc file and add this to the bottom to load our directory path. Then use this command to reload bash. Next, let's go back to the home directory and make a stream folder to hold all of our streaming files and set its read-write permissions. Now, if you have a USB webcam, you can launch MJPEG Streamer by calling the input uvc file and outputting it to the ww directory we created. If you have a Pi Cam, then you'll want to use an MJPEG command like this one. And once it's running, you can escape out of it. And to run the Pi Cam, you'll want to launch it using the Raspy Still command, setting the width and height, output directory, segment length, and naming mask. The nice thing about the MJPEG streamer is now you're done. If you go to any web browser and type in your Pi's IP address on port 9000, this should pull up the MJPEG streamer web page. And if you click on the stream tab, you should see the stream of your webcam. If you want to kill the streams, you can use the pkill command like this, followed by the program name. 
So we've got eyes, now all we need is some legs. This is where the RC car will come into play. Now the best way to connect the Pi to the RC car is through the Pi's GPIO pins in this motor controller. Each of these pins can transmit a signal. So looking at our motor controller, we have power ports and then four pins. Now on the Pi, we need four regular GPIO pins and a ground pin to connect to the motor controller. So let's just use these middle five pins. Connect these to the input pins on the controller and then run the ground pin to the ground terminal. All right, so now how do we turn these pins on and off? by using a program called Wiring Pi. Just clone it like this, jump into that folder and build it. Now to test it out, first set the mode of the pin that we're gonna use, and then you can turn it on by writing a one to it, and then turn it off by writing a zero to it. Well, now that we have our webcam and a way to control our robot, how do we combine everything together? Using PHP. Before we can install that, we first need to install a little web server called Nginx, and then we can install the PHP files. Edit the Nginx config template to allow port 80, a server name, point it to our WW folder, allow index.php, create an access log and an error log, and then to enable PHP, you want to add this whole section and then save and exit it. Now you can start the Nginx server and then reload both the PHP and Nginx services. Now all that's left to do is to create a web interface. Luckily I've already created an extremely basic one for you. Feel free to wget it, unzip it, and move it to your web directory. And then be sure to edit the spi-cam.php file and scroll down until you see this line and change the IP address to match the IP address of your Pi. And then save and exit out. And now from any browser, you can go to your Pi's IP address followed by spi-cam.php and it should load the camera as well as some very basic controls. I know it's not pretty, but it gets the job done. And feel free to expand upon that if you want. To make everything fully mobile, you can plug your Pi into a battery booster, or if you feel cavalier enough, you can power it through the RC car itself. But that's a tutorial for another day. There's lots of cool places to go from here, so if you're able to make this project even more awesome, feel free to send me a video of it so that I can feature it. If you would like to learn more about how I created the web interface using PHP, JavaScript, and Ajax, I'll soon be releasing that as a Tinkernut Labs video. If you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider sending some bitcoins my way or consider donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Don't have any money? No problem. You can also support me by commenting, liking, or following me on Google Plus and Twitter. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide.